Welcome to Flight Night. I have my friends BC and Tony here to uh, enjoy these hydromels. If you have watched the previous four videos, you know what all four hydromels these are. So this is just a time for us to taste them. Welcome BC, welcome Tony. Hello. So uh, we already talked. We're gonna go and start with the traditional. So I know you guys haven't poured them yet. You're gonna pour them as we go. Feel free to go and pour the classy Barb. Now I uh, sillily enough named these Barb. I don't know why, I'm just trying to find some stupid name. You can feel free to pour your glass however much you want. Um, BC, you are very well versed in hydromels. And Tony, you are very well versed in wine and no doubtly beer and all those things. I don't know if you've had many very light ABV uh, meads before. No, so I don't actually know what this is. This is uh, exactly, oh, it's a funny. light, it's a light ABV <laughs> mead. <laughs> so, okay. So it's what the, what what makes it a hydromel? Like, what's the classification that makes it that? Uh, it's an arguable thing, but some people <laughs> say if it's between seven point five percent or eight percent and below. So essentially, if it's below eight percent, it is a hydromel. Okay. So it's like a soda. Yeah. Yeah, like a hard seltzer. Like yeah. in like in Russia, this would be a soda. Yeah. So uh, I mean. <laughs> I'll take it. And sure. It should, it should be a, it should be a soda here too. In hindsight, I mean, let's. <laughs> so. Fair. Uh, um. All right. So you guys go ahead and and try it and just again let me know what you think. I'm curious. Um. My fiance bought these flight boards, so I broke out. Y'all, I am rocking it, full on. Look at that right oh, there. Bougie. <laughs> I'm going bougie tonight. This is quite light. Uh huh. They're all about six point seven estimate estimated to be. Yeah. This actually reminds me of the seltzers that Coop did. It kind of is like reminiscent of that. It doesn't kinda, taste like, it doesn't taste, you can't taste the grain but, but, because there's obviously because there's no grain in it, but it has that same like viscosity and just yeah. general characteristic. I, I, it's good. I, I mean, there's not a so lot I, to it, you know? I yeah. took some notes from BC's Hydromel making in that uh, he does a lot of, he does some, um, well, you do some front end acid adjustments. I did some back end acid adjustments and used erythritol for all of these for back sweetening. Okay. I was wondering. So, and I was going to, earlier I was going to say like it, this literally kind of, and not in like a, a gooey sweet way, but it kind of just tastes like cane sugar a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like it kind of just, I don't know, the way cane sugar smells like good, good sugar, not like the weird gross sugar you buy at the grocery store, but like quality <laughs> sugar cane. Yeah. Um, it it reminds me of that the way that 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 aroma presents itself. It kind of tastes like the way that smells, which I yeah. I mean I kind of I kind of like it. I the problem with this is like it's not quite low enough that I can just like crush like a six pack of these. Yeah. No, I think that uh, I mean I could have. I mean I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's tough the problem with with some meads unless you do a lot of stuff to help build the body and the back end like if you get down to a four percenter you got to do some other adjusting to make it not feel watery because at that point sometimes like honey just loses all of its body and so it just feels like a weird watery substance that's not like special i don't know if that makes sense but yeah like for example in in some lower abv stuff i will add powdered wine tannin to it to help bulk up ah. the body just a touch so that way it rides across the palate rather than just kind of like washing down and vanishing huh wild just a mm -hmm. little ah. like uh, this one that i just mixed up before the show it's three grams in a five gallon batch which looks like nothing when you put it in but it's just enough that it helps it coast across the palate. Wow. Yeah, it's, okay. It is very, huh. it's, there's a lot of, um, I mean, you already know this because the complexity of wine, it's the same thing uh, for, uh, even more important for low ABV meads, I feel like it's a little harder to achieve that fullness well. So, so I like there, this. I, I almost want it to be a little bit more acidic than it mm -hmm. is. Okay. Um, uh, I can I can agree with that, but if you hadn't said that, I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, I wouldn't I, have thought about it. I almost want a little bit more honey flavor too, but it looks like you used yeah. quite a bit of honey in this. So uh, I used uh, yeah, I definitely used um, 
I mean, it was like 1.2 pounds for the gallon or 1.3 or yeah. something like that. So enough. The problem, like Tony mentioned earlier, is that it just went dry. And so sometimes that can pull away that sweetness. If I had a, a bottle, car or excuse me, a forced carbonation method, I could have bolstered that yeah. honey character, which would be oh, even yeah. nicer. I think it's crushable. I'd, I'd yeah. pound two or three of these just work in the grill. So, well, in so that sense. <laughs> that's well, a, crushable are we going to do a crushable uh rating let's do yeah, that we should. A, <laughs> what's what's your crushable rating for this one i, I think it's like a three and a half out of, out of five. what out of five okay <laughs> three and a half I out of five okay it's like it's so light in in it there's almost like and and, and i sit i i like it it i mean it's it's just like nothing you know it's like uh -huh. <laughs> it really <laughs> just, just like tastes it really just tastes like cane sugar, but not in a sweet way. I, it's kind of, that's such a vague, that doesn't mean anything. I don't know. Yeah. But, and it kind of has like a little like vanilla kind of thing. It's so forgettable, but like in the best way possible, <laughs> you know? I think that <laughs> is like, crushable then. That's like a five out of five then. Right. It's so forgettable. Yeah. But it's I've memorable. already drank half the bottle and like I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same place. So what's your what's your crushable rating out of five? We gotta keep this going. I'm curious. It's a solid four out of four point five out of five. I won't quite go to five, five. Because there's always room there's always room for improvement. Okay. I would say I would say this is for me uh about three, about a three and a half. I, I wish I'd done a little more a little tad bit sweeter, probably more honey character. That would really knock this up for me. It's good, though. Okay, so let's move on now. We'll kind of go up, and we'll get to the, the wildest one last, being the the banana. Go to the uh, apple hydromel, which is called the wild barbarian. Now, this is theoretically a sizer, okay. but there's that borderline. I don't know. It's one of those. I mean, I didn't use apple juice. I used real apples. So is it people would consider... I don't know. That's where that, that line is. BC, you'll have to speak into that if you think this is a... Uh, would you consider this a, a sizer? So so you used apples and... In the, in the secondary, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that qualifies as a sizer. What is sweet tango? That's uh, whatever <laughs> brand of apple I, I used. Oh, okay. So that's the apple. I was, it was the dance I did while I was making it. That's what I, I wondered if there's like a little bit of a... I was I was just chilling, dude. <laughs> You'll see it in the video. Don't worry. <laughs> Good. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So feel free to take a sip on this guy. Look at that color. That's not what I expected. Sweet tango mm -hmm. sounds like a hot sauce. It does. Yeah. Like a like a mango Tabasco. Mm. Yeah. Like you could have put a, li a little bit of habanero in this, and I wouldn't have been mad about it. Cool. The apple on the nose is nice. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot, actually. Um, to be quite honest, you've done some other apple stuff that has not been your strongest, but this is a lot better than- I agree. I completely agree, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Listen, uh, BC, I've known Garrett since we were a freshman in college. I've uh -huh. known him a long time. So I, I, I don't mind uh, <laughs> ragging on him. That's, that's pretty mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it, this is nice. I, I, I do, I think I prefer your man-made sizer more. Mm -hmm to this but the the subtlety of the apple flavor is nice but still like cuts through the rest of the of the mead there's like the honey flavor is there too it's almost got like a it, it doesn't say that you spice this but i can it's it's warm a little bit on mm. the palate too the honey i use is actually local uh it's cheat wood honey which is like an ada or something like that so mm -hmm. they, i really like that honey from them i could get it at winco that's what i was telling you about that one time uh, yeah. this is yeah. the winco honey aside this, this is nice so my only my only i actually like it quite a bit my only negative comment about it and i i don't even know this would be considered a negative comment it's just more of like an observation that mm -hmm. some people can find off-putting it's a little medicinal mm. it's it's like a little it tastes like apple medicine, just like a little bit. I can see that. Yeah, I can see this. It's um, could, I wonder mm. if that's a contribution of. I was gonna say maybe erythritol in a in that, but I don't think erythritol to me always has that taste because this didn't. Mm -hmm. It's like I a little bit get very. What you're saying. No, I was a little bit get what you're saying. It's, I wouldn't say medicinal, but it's got almost like a 
just a touch of artificial apple flavor to it that mm. doesn't have like a fresh like I feel like there's like a, a like a like an apple jolly rancher flavor that's just like there's just a touch of that in the background that makes it I think paired with the 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 relatively low sweetness yeah you can kind of like pick up on a a note that you're not expecting in there interesting interesting hmm. I could I could see what you mean that said I like this a lot yeah I actually like th- I like this more than the last one um and and to I do kind of wish it had a little more acid. Mm-hmm. I think it would help it carry. Yeah. Uh, Did you do any carry? Acid it's balancing? so vibrant. It's so vibrant and and like just kind of juicy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not overwhelming. It's not necessarily. <clears throat> it's not sweet at all. As like just enough like under the tongue, to kind of like keep you coming back. But I think with a little more acid, you could you you just like pulled to it a little bit more. Um, and then that, that medicinal thing, which is kind of bugging me now, uh, <laughs> I only smell it really like, like right, like on the start of the nose and then that's it. I don't, I know we're all using like different cups and glasses and stuff. I'm just using like this random beer glass, but, um, it's just like initially when I pick up the glass, that's the first thing. And then it like blows away. I don't mm-hmm. notice it after that. So to answer your question, BC, I didn't on these next three, I didn't, or next two rather, I didn't do any acid adjustment on this one or the following two. Um, and that was not uh, intentional. It was kind of a, a, I was pleased where they were at at the moment. Um, only acid we would get from this is the malic acid, right? Because of the apple. Right. And that's what I was going to say. I, I actually like the acid balance on this, but I do think just a little pinch of citric acid or a little squeeze of lemon juice would help up the brightness a little bit in a way that kind of counteracts that softness of the malic acid Mm -hmm. and that way you do get a little bit more of a sense of freshness out of it but it just like it just falls like on the finish on the back of the i don't know when i drink like a really great pilsner and i'm this is the only thing i can think of it's just like the cleanest Mm -hmm. most vibrant thing and um, you know, you've got this nice multi-character. So this is the best way I can relate it. And then um, this, it's like it has that um, weight to it of a great, like a great pilsner. Mm-hmm. But then it just falls short on the back, like it just doesn't clean up like I want it mm-hmm. to. Yeah, That's I get fair. that. And I think a little bit of tannin might help with that, just to help it stick to the back of the tongue. But I mean, my 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 like negatives on this are so minimal i i right i, 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 like I don't i'm like being super nitpicky i, I, pick right. It. I, right. I like that i like the nitpicky that's great that's uh, i like better. it a lot i think i think crushable we're we're more in the range of four and a half out of five on this Ooh. one Ooh. like i this with like a big thick berkshire pork chop and some mm-hmm. fried what? potatoes <laughs> just stellar okay okay Tony, what's your crushable? Yeah, I can I concur. I don't know. I feel like I'm back. I feel like I want to backtrack on the last one now because I. But no, I think you this can is backtrack. A, it doesn't matter. You can re- retract your crushable. I'm gonna actually gonna give it a four. I'm not gonna give it a four or five because it just falls short on the back. Okay. Of it okay. For me, uh, I do. I want to like. I don't know. Part of me wants to like put this in a cocktail. That'd mm. be interesting. I can see that. Yeah. Like, a little yeah, bit of know. bitters and. Like a, I don't know, lemon and gin. Yeah. Oh, gin, yeah, yeah. Mm. This is a this is like a four for me. There are some things, um, a little more sweetness, and again, honey character. Those are the two main things I know I'm going to hit with every one of these, truly. But uh, I do like the uh, honey character that I got without really doing much. I just threw those apples in that secondary and let them go, and they got fermented on, but still retained some of those the sugar. So. Yeah, All right, let, let's move to the Bonkers Barbarian. This is the Pear Hydromel, green label. So same process um, as the apple one. I added pears in the secondary, and yeah. You didn't get some sweet tango pears for this? Oh, man, I sweet tango <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> is this supposed to be still? No, it's, it's yours, yours should be carbonated. It's definitely not. What? How did yours not carbonate? Here. I mean, I'm here. Oh, I, I believe you. 
Yep, totally flat. What the heck? Huh. I wonder if the the cap hadn't sealed all the way. It didn't. It it felt like that when I popped it. Oh, maybe it. Yeah, maybe I somehow. Okay, well, you're gonna. It was try super it. easy to pull off. Uh, imagine the carbonation. Yeah, you're just gonna <laughs> shake it up a whole bunch. You're gonna put some tonic in it. <laughs> the nose on this one's totally different from the mm -hmm. the apple. It's okay. I can I can get through it. Suffer through it. Suffer through the mead. Whoa, that's very different. Mm -hmm. I always expect pear and apple to kind of taste the same. Yeah, it's perfumey. Hmm. I can I can see what you mean. It's got a lot of aromatics, especially like when you. I mean the inhale has some, but I feel like the taste has a lot too. Well, in the exhale, there's like a lot of perfumey floral kind of aromatics. This one I feel like has more honey character than the previous ones for whatever reason, even though they had the same process. It does definitely taste sweeter than the previous two. Mm -hmm. Now I did back sweeten to taste. I did not do an equal back sweetening on each okay. one. So there's a good chance that I was like, this one needs to be sweeter than the previous ones. Yeah, it is sweeter. Um, and it does, it is perfumey. Like, like you, yeah, I agree. I, I don't know. It's weird because this is still so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Man. I, I mean, I still, I'm going to drink it. Like, <laughs> I don't dislike it. It has like some weird, funky, like cheesy thing. At least oh, mine does. Maybe it got oxygenated in that process. If it didn't completely seal. It's not brown though. It's not, there's no browning. The color is good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No little furry friends growing on the inside of the bottle. It's gonna no. say, chunk it. No, everything looks good. <laughs> I'm, now I'm nervous. It, it wouldn't hurt me. I'm not worried no, about that. It's, it's yeah, it'd be unlikely that it would kill you. It just yeah. tastes bad. It doesn't taste bad. Oh, this one has. This one's just way more the sparkle. Yeah. So this is it's perfumey. It's on the. The actual flavor profile, it's got a little bit of that like grittiness that you experience with a pear, you know, that kind of, I don't want to say mm -hmm. like chalky, but it's got texturally, it's got a lot more going on than the previous two. Surprisingly, <laughs> it cleared. I was, last time I used pear, it did yeah. not clear at all. Did you use any pectinase or anything on it? No. That's what was, I mean, I was real lazy with these ones to be honest. I, I probably should have used something, but these just straight up cleared as, as it was for the most part, other than the banana, but the banana's got its own clarity problems. I think weirdly Did you... I like this more than the apple. And it might just be because of the sweetness. I'm picking up more of the honey notes in here. Yeah, I don't know. Tony, what you got? Well, mine sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what sorry. Uh, uh, I'll no, get you. I, I mean, think I have another bottle somewhere. I'll I'll get it to you. Don't worry. Okay. No, I'm I'm not worried about it. It's just um, I I don't know. I don't I don't really want to make a comment because I because it's not really it's not really a fair playing field That's, since I, I don't I'm not really tasting it the way it should. I think there might be a little bit of of oxidation. I smell it very 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 slightly, but um, it's not enough to detract from the meat itself it's just i mean it's flat you know and i mean yeah. Yeah. i've had flat beer and it still tastes like what it's supposed to be it's just mm -hmm. flat you know it doesn't it doesn't carry it doesn't doesn't have the texture or anything but i kind of see what you mean about um about it it is texturally like even though it's flat i still i'm i was kind of thinking about that too before you commented on that about a lot of times when you get pears or they're really underripe and they've got this weird texture like um like they like somebody put sand in them yeah, yeah. That's gritty the, yeah but i don't mind that i, I think mm. with the carbon i'm trying to imagine what this would be like with carbonation and it's great i think <laughs> <laughs> i can try think, it sometime <laughs> I, yeah uh i think it would be uh, quite good i think yeah i think the cap just didn't seal on it because when i pulled it off it didn't yeah it just like popped right off there was no i didn't have to try at all mm -hmm. 
Fun fact about this one, I tempted, I bought three sets of pears, meaning the first time I did it, I let the pears go overripe, did it again. I was like, I'm going to cut them. And then I waited too long. And the third time I finally got it. So it took me a while to get the pears to the right. <laughs> so this level. one was expensive. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a little, uh, a little silly, to say the least. Well, well, I like it a lot. This is, this probably again is like a four and a half out of five on the crushable. I, I think that I already said this, but I think the sweetness really helps with this one because it reinforces the fruit flavors mm -hmm. in a way that I, I wasn't getting as much on the apple. And I like that. I don't think I would change much about this. I, I'm, I'm sorry that, that Tony's- <laughs> Other than the carbonation. <laughs> it, is, it is a really, it's a really lovely drink. And I think it highlights the pear in a way that you don't get a lot of times with, with fermented pear stuff like pear like cherry uh stuff like that so yeah. I, it's really nice tony are you gonna are you gonna omit your uh crushable rating for this one i don't know i i yeah i mean i'll just give it a two because <laughs> <laughs> okay that's fair i'm not mad i'm mad at all <laughs> that's fine uh no it's okay um i i just i don't yeah, I can't really comment on it because I just, I didn't really see it for what it was, which yeah. is unfortunate, but I, I don't think that's necessarily your fault. I've had, I've had that happen with beers before, like commercial beers and, uh, yeah, I've even had like commercial wines, uh, where the cork didn't seal right. And I would say I think if one... I bought this from the store and I had a bad one, I'd, I'd be like, ah, oh, dang, that sucks. But I wouldn't, I would yeah. not buy it because I had a, like one of them was, you know, screwed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like a, this is Definitely higher cool. for me because it's got a little earth. It's more earthy, but it's sweet. And so it hits like the apple was pretty good, but this one's like four and a half, four and a quarter for me. So, all right, let's move to the last one. The odd barb. Now, I don't know if you've had something banana flavored, but I'm very curious. I've kind of saved this one for last. I'm very curious what you guys think of this one. So, so mine is super carbonated. Yeah, Which, mine mine is also very carbonated. That it's might have settled. been priming sugar problem. Ooh, did I carbonate these with honey? They, this might have been one of those gamblers. This was a gamble, I think. So I think I ran out of priming <laughs> sugar and I just was like, honey, here we go. So, well, uh, it smells super good. So this uh, this blue ribbon back here, uh -huh. I, I won this blue ribbon with a banana wine a mm. few years ago at the state fair. Not not for the banana wine, but for best label. <laughs> <laughs> that was my only experience uh, doing a, a banana forward brew. Well, let me know what you think of this one. So we're it's on the banana hydromel. <laughs> so what this tastes like, it, it, it does taste like banana, but what it tastes like is like those slightly overripe bananas where you're like, it's time to make banana bread out of them. Okay. It's got a little bit, there's the sourness in there. I'm going to say this is my least favorite one of the night. The sourness in there is a little bit, it's got a little bit of a rotten sour. Oh, I don't, I don't agree with that. I actually think the sourness makes it like kind of tangy and like me, me I want to keep coming back to it. Yeah, that's a personal it's the preference thing. For that's me. interesting. Hmm. It's, I'm, it's... I almost drank the whole bottle. I just sat here and like, <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> I went back to the apple for a minute. And then I went back to this, and um, I think sourness create it, it has some acidity to it that you don't associate with banana. So I think maybe that's where you're getting that. Like bananas don't really have high acid content, right. um, so it's sort of a weird thing to associate that. It just tastes a little bit banana peel on the exhale in a way that I just I don't like. The bananas were definitely ripe. I purposefully let them ripe. They weren't like black, like they weren't that crazy, but um, I actually let them go. And it's not the same bananas, BC, that you're envisioning. <laughs> I, think you're, <laughs> um, I remember that. <laughs> it's not the same ones. This is, these were decently ripe, just put into a brew. Um, yeah, I, I am surprised at how much banana flavor was kept. No, I will say you retained a lot of the flavor of the banana. I think it's just that the acid, and Tony, you may be right. I may be like sensing it as as that it has gone off because I'm not used to having acidity in my bananas. 
but it just tastes, it's like a fermentation flavor. It tastes soured mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't super work for my palate. And it may have to do with the fact that you use honey to, to carve this, right? That's what you said? Yeah. So it's... I'm, I'm guessing. I don't actually know that. Uh, I'm yeah. not going to pretend to know. I, I just... Um, and, and, you know, I don't know. I also, I really, really like sours, like sour beers. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm open to that idea. I don't know if you drink those or not, but, um, yeah, I recently picked up, uh, if, if you want to borrow a slurry when I'm finished with it, I recently picked up, there's a new yeast called Philly sour that is an oh, ale yeast, yeah. but creates lactic acid. Yeah. And so it's not actually using bacteria to do that. And I picked some up at the brew shop here in Oklahoma City because it looked interesting. And then I re I remembered like, oh, I don't I don't like sour beers. <laughs> so <laughs> I wonder how this is gonna work in a mead. And hey, so yeah. If I get a I have to brew with it, but you're welcome to my slurry when I'm done with I've, it. I've got some sake uh, yeast, so feel free to, you know, I can give you that if you a little, want. A little swap. Yeah, swap. Yankee swap. I'm into that. Well, what's the what's the smashability? Was that what it was? Crushability? Crushability. <laughs> smashability. <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> um, Mark this as this the... is <laughs> So I don't really get to put the pair up to it since mine was flawed. Um I I like it. It's still probably my least favorite. Um, even though I still, I, even though I drink it and I, I, I actually kind of enjoyed it. I don't think it's as well made yeah. as the others. I, I can't really comment on the pear thing, but I could see where it would have fallen. Um, and, and kind of appreciate it for kind of what it is, but, um, it's a little funky. The banana thing, the banana thing's a little like. It's niche. It's niche for it's, sure. Like it's a little. Uh, she can call it niche. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little weird. I don't hate it though. I I would drink it if somebody handed it to me. I would drink the whole thing. I had a. I, I kind of liked it, but I kind of didn't like it. I don't know. It's a little. It's a three five for me. I had a banana bread beer a few years ago, and it's reminding me a lot of that, except without that like bready note mm, to kind of mm -hmm. back it up uh crushability i'm i'm putting this at like a one one and a half maybe it's fair I, I i think it's when it comes to banana hydromel i think it's well executed i mm -hmm. think it's just not for me and i'm bummed for tony because i really do think that if i had to pick a favorite of the night it's the pear yeah i think the pear is the best executed out of all four of these i think the apple is my favorite but Apple's definitely a close second for me. You got oh, um, a properly carbonated version of this pear so he can understand. Yeah, I'll get him one. I got one. I think I still have one in here. I have a, well, I'll say this. The banana is, I, I'm in the same boat. I think uh, when I think of crushability, I think of willingness to drink multiple bottles. And mm -hmm. this is like, I would drink a bottle of it and i would be okay but i wouldn't like say here's three you know what i mean if someone handed yeah. me three i wouldn't be like all right let's go round two that's round why, three that's why with that first one i was like I, I like the alcohol content was a little high but i could totally have drunk like an, an infinity amount of those because it was just so yeah just go just down. like it was like soda water yeah. Smashable. If you're watching this right now, um, this video might be, let's say, 37 minutes long for you. In truth, it's been uh, almost two hours for yeah, us. If you want to see, hours. there's a good chance that we've had a lot of great conversation tonight, and I don't want to um, take that away from anyone. So there's a good chance that there will be a longer version talking about the laws of uh, home brewing and lots of awesome um, topics, truly, about brewing. Uh, available somewhere else, uh, aka probably my Patreon. So if you want to see the the cool extra <laughs> content where we get to dive deeper into this, uh, go check that out. But I, I think mean, I want to add to you, Garrett, just quickly. I know you're mm -hmm. in your spill right now, but I'm going to interrupt you. For those of you who have any interest in that, please watch the extended the extended version. I think you'll get a lot out of it. I'm coming from a perspective that that is not 
um, I don't make anything. I just, my job is to, um, my job is to totally examine product. Um, so I think the conversation we had, if you have any interest in it, is worth watching. Um, you know, we get a little loose throughout the night because we've, you know, been been drinking, but um, <laughs> at least I do. Uh, yeah. But oh, yeah. Um, I, I think it's really, a, a, I think it's a, if it's a, if it's something that you're interested in, please watch it um, and comment, say what you need to say, uh, put your opinions out there because those sorts of things are important in the beverage community. It's not just about mead. It's about making the beverage accessible to everybody and whether you drink alcohol or not, you know, it's mm -hmm. just, if you want to delve in, um, please make it something that people can enjoy and just love and, and make it something that uh, is on everybody's table, just beverage in general, make it something fun, you know. Everyone has their part, and I think that's important. Whether you buy it or you support the backdoor law side or you make it yourself, everybody's got their side. Um, to that point, y'all, we, we, you know, Tony said it best. We have been drinking tonight. It's been almost a two-hour session. I've cleaned my glasses. In every <laughs> regard, I've cleaned my glasses. Holy oh, my God. God. Good. Dude, I feel like been, I've been, I still have I still have a fair amount of mead. I mean, I've been I could... I've been enjoying my night, and I I gotta say thank you for because <laughs> thank you for showing up and uh, and chatting about this. This, stuff. this This has been you know I I thought this was gonna be a, a quick little thing, but this has turned into something much more spectacular. Um, and I'm thankful <laughs> for you guys and your knowledge and your, your passion. I think that's that's the big thing here is you guys are passionate about. Um, this the community in, in al alcohol brewing in consumption and selling in general so uh thank you guys for helping me out bc tony you guys are are much appreciated guests and i would love to have you guys on i hope to have another flight night this has been fun. yeah yeah, yeah I I'd, I'd totally do this again and i think um maybe we should do bc's next Oh, BC, you're up, buddy. Y'all may have to come over for that. I keg most of my stuff. <laughs> it's true. He's oh, do you really? He's more really high tech him? than me. Thank you for sharing these incredible <laughs> needs with us. Dude, this has been a blast, and really, I appreciate you guys your time. And uh, again, flight night will be repeated in some form or fashion. Um, if you want to see the full thing, it's going to be out on my patreon if you want to see that it's been a really fun experience and uh i'll be editing this down some in some regard but there's been a lot of amazing talk tonight and content and drinking and um you can see the progression of our uh <laughs> sobriety as we go through the night it's been it's been fun but thank you guys for your time and uh we'll do this again soon cheers cheers, cheers. i got nothing left but cheers <laughs>